A few videos back, I felt like it would be a fun idea to discuss and deep dive all the cave story details in Blade Strangers, but at the same time as that game's release, Nicholas pressed another crossover versus game, but in the form of a competitive puzzle game. That's right, today we'll be deep diving as much cave story info as that I could find in Crystal Crisis. But before we begin the deep dive on the game, I actually want to point out that Nicholas teased the hell out of the community for this game's release. The first tweet teasing Crystal Crisis was back in 2016 on the official Cave Story Twitter account. Quote was set into a walking-esque pose, and the tweet was captioned with nothing more than hashtag Cave Story in both English and Japanese. Later on in 2017, Nicholas tweeted on their official account a gif of Quote twirling the polar star and captioned the tweet, Hey, that's a new trick. About one year later, they would quote this tweet, no pun intended, but caption the tweet, Quote is ready for epic crossover battles on Nintendo Switch. Are you? Many people believed that Quote would be the next fighter being revealed for Brawlhalla, as many indie characters were being revealed during the time of the original tweet. But of course, Quote would then be seen in the gameplay trailer for Crystal Crisis, set to officially release late 2018 to everyone's excitement. And then was delayed again to April 2019 and then again to May. But at least Optimus Prime narrates the game now. Moving on to the game itself, we're going to go ahead and begin deep diving with the game's story mode. Now, I want you to sit down for this. Really prepare for what I'm about to say because it might not sit well with many of you. Crystal Crisis is actually Cave Story 2. Okay, allow me to explain. The plot of Crystal Crisis involves the red crystal, yes, that red crystal, forming a gate that connects worlds never before known to each other. The villains of said worlds are trying to collect the red crystal to use it for their own evil purposes. The main villain of the game is Balos. Yes, somehow, he survived. It never stated how Balos survived, but he is after the red crystal along with the Kuji the Demon, Jim Hawkins, and an original character, Elise. Elise is apparently from a yet to be revealed Nicholas game, but we have no idea what yet, even to this day. Anyways, with Balos as the bad guy, Quote is clearly the hero, right? Well, yes, but only technically. You kind of get to pick your own hero during the main story by choosing who you want to play as during each battle. Whoever you choose during these battles determines who you will end the story with. After going through each fight, hopefully picking Quote and Curly whenever possible, you'll be given Quote and Curly to fight Balos with as the final boss. Which, by the way, can I mention how good this music is? The music for Crystal Crisis is genuinely insanely good. The remix for the Balos fight was actually the same music used for the Doctor's Blade Strangers gameplay, which I didn't even realize. Thank you guys for pointing that out. Anyways, good remixes aside, Quote and Curly are brought to Balos and it's revealed that Balos never died during the events of Cave Story. And well, this isn't inaccurate. While it is never mentioned who speaks the line, after Balos blows up in Cave Story, the lines, hot, I, hot, so painful, help, can't breathe, so hot, are said. It is kind of assumed it's Balos, but again, it's never directly pointed out. If Balos can speak after blowing up, I guess Crystal Crisis assumes that he lived. Balos mentions how none of them died during their original battle, and how this time, nobody was leaving the fight until at least Balos or the robots died. Eventually, Balos is defeated, doesn't die, and then he mentions how defeating him was a mistake. It's eventually real that the Doctor, as the undead core, is also still alive. For some reason, Balos seems scared of the Doctor, but if you ask me, Balos should easily be leagues stronger than him. But that's a conversation for another day. Either way, the Doctor slash the Undead Core is the true final boss of the game, and he's honestly one of the easiest boss fights in the entire run. I should mention by now that every character in Crystal Crisis has their own unique skills. However, the Doctor has every skill in the game. This sounds intimidating until you realize it basically means he has a random skill and the skill he uses doesn't mean it'll be a good one for the situation he's in. Either way, the Doctor is defeated, and that's it. The Red Crystal isn't destroyed, the portals don't close, the Doctor dies, but everyone kind of lives their own brand new crossover life in peace. In fact, during the ending sequence, we get actually a ton of dope scenes starring everyone in the game. 
This video being Cave Story related for references, we'll only be pointing out the artwork and scenes with Cave Story characters in it. Thankfully, we immediately start off with some really good art of Astro Boy and Quo eating ramen, and in the background, we see Balrog as a chef serving blackjack, which is honestly some of the best art of Balrog I've seen. The guy was wrongfully thrown into torture, let him at least enjoy his retirement. Hey everyone, Post Editing Coda here, and I just want to say, I know I messed up and said Balrog instead of Balos for that previous scene, but that's because I recorded the script at 3 in the morning. Anyways, let's continue on. Following that, the next sequence we see is Helen, Solange, Tina, and Curly all having a slumber party, and it seems Curly has brought all of Jenka's pups with her. The next sequence we see is of Curly Brace relaxing on the beach with Tina. Isaac is also being killed by a tiny crab, but please, don't mind. Afterwards, we see a Bond from 1001 Spikes singing his heart out for karaoke, and it seems Quote is enjoying it an absolute ton. This is actually one of the rare occurrences we could actually see Quote smile and laugh, and damn it, I need more. Quote deserves to be the happiest robot boy he can be. The credits then end with Quote, Curly, Isaac, and Tina watching fireworks and kimonos, which is rad as hell. Once again, seeing Quote and Curly happy and relaxing is incredibly surreal, but also incredibly satisfying knowing everything they've been through together. The credits end with fireworks in the shape of the playable characters, and yes, Quote and Curly are here too. Moving on from the mini-movies, I think the next thing we can talk about is the artwork that comes with the game. In the Extras tab, we get to see a ton of production and concept art, as well as sketches of characters in Crystal Crisis. Of course, we'll just be focusing on the Cave Story related art in this video. Starting off, we have the amazing original box art for Crystal Crisis, and this was honestly really close to being the final box art. Nicalis was already advertising the game with this artwork on the box before its delay. If you ask me, this box art is genuinely much better than the box art we got but both box arts fail to compare to the Packaging Artwork Version 3 variant of the box art. This art is insanely good. Something about the brushstroke style of the coloring is so good, especially with quote front and center with this bold outline. If you ask me, this is the best Crystal Crisis box art. But I will admit, the box art doesn't exactly scream puzzle versus game. Next up, we have Quote and Astro Boy playing Crystal Crisis on the Switch, and I love this art. It went to be used in just a little bit of promotional work, but was mainly the art used on the back of the game's instruction manual. From here, we get to move on to the Balos and his posse artwork, featuring all the villains of the game. Well, all the villains except Jim Hawkins. For some reason, I want to believe that Jim wasn't always planned to be a villain in the game, but... That's just a hunch purely based off this art alone. And finally, we have some really good artwork of Quilt and Curly side by side. Not too much to say about this artwork. A classic duo in some really good. Now, there of course is tons of neat concept art, including more of Quilt and Curly, but I think going over all of it would take up a ton of time in this video. That said, I decided to make a new playlist that I'll occasionally be updating with behind the scenes type footage for my videos. If you'd like to see my opinions on all of the art in the game, as well as tons of other neat Crystal Crisis facts that aren't Cave Story related, I'll be leaving a link to the playlist in a card here, as well as putting a link to it in the description. It can also be found on the channel page for those interested in that kind of content. Please don't forget to check that playlist out. Moving on, we get to actually talk about Quote and Curly themselves. It's honestly going to be a bit interesting covering these two, as it's going to be much different than covering them in Blade Strangers. They both play exactly the same, as does everyone else. The only unique things about them are their skills. For those who don't know, in Crystal Crisis, you have a defensive skill and an offensive skill. Long description short, a defensive skill will give you an effect to help you on your side of the board, and an offensive skill will allow you to do something to your opponent's side of the board, of course, giving them a negative effect. Quote's offensive skill allows him to place big blocks in a random color order on the opponent's side of the field. His defensive skill allows him to drill out the center of his side of the field. Not the entire center, but a really good amount. Don't worry, there's more than just the skills to talk about. Quote also gets his own stage, 
which was the outer wall. An incredibly good choice for a cave story stage, and I honestly would have preferred this in Bleed Strangers. The stage of course got the remix of Moon Song, which is honestly not surprising with how iconic the song is. Outside of that, however, there isn't too much to mention about Quote's appearance. Time for Curly. Jumping right into her offensive skill, it's one of my personal favorites. Curly will shoot the bottom of the opponent's board, and all the blocks that were shot get dropped onto the very top of their board. It's an incredibly good skill, especially if the opponent has been building up a cluster or two. Her defensive skill actually just shoots down the bottom of her side of the board. Not as original as both of quotes, sadly. As for Curly's stage, I was actually incredibly surprised to see that they added the G-Clone Chamber. And the remix they added is, of course, the Wind Fortress, and this remix slaps. Dare I say it's the best remix in the entire game. I listen to it all the time, and I'm actually listening it to it now as I'm typing this script. Now, I know I mentioned before that we'd be deep diving Quote and Curly, but there is actually one more playable character we gotta deep dive as well. The final character is actually the big bad himself, Balos. Yes, Balos makes his playable debut in Crystal Crisis of all games. Balos' stage is, of course, the sealed chamber, and his remix is of the final battle, which, as I mentioned before, is really dope. As for his skills, his offensive skill is Constrict, in which he'll bring in the walls from the ending of Cave, Cave Story to force you to play the game in just four columns rather than the original eight. His defensive skill is Final Countdown, which will have me have to explain a little bit more about Crystal Crisis. During Crystal Crisis, when you send blocks to your opponent's side, they will drop with a number on them, and you have to drop at least that number of blocks before you can destroy them. Balos' defensive skill allows him to use all the numbered blocks immediately, no matter how high the number is. And with that, believe it or not, we've successfully deep-dived Crystal Crisis for everything Dokotsu Monogatari related. There was actually a lot more to take in than I originally expected, and if I had to rate the best part about Crystal Crisis, it'd be the Crystal Cluster toy that the game came with the Switch version. Thanks for watching.